Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully speed up Windows 7 a little bit. So this should be a pretty straightforward tutorial and we're going to jump right into it. First thing I recommend doing is right clicking on some blank space on your desktop and then left clicking on personalize. I recommend scrolling down this list until you get to Windows Classic underneath basic and high contrast themes. So again, left click on Windows Classic here. If you don't mind your computer looking like this, you're more than welcome to change the background as well. If you just want to add an image or something, you could right click on it and then select the image as your background. Or you go underneath Personalize here and then just select a background from one of the options in this list. So we could go to the Windows Desktop Backgrounds here and select any background you want. So you can still have the effects of speeding up your performance a little bit because we all know many of you guys probably don't want that background but if you're okay with your taskbar looking like this then you're already halfway there now another thing I would recommend doing would be to open up the star menu and type in programs and features again one of the best matches should say programs and features I recommend left clicking on that and now if you have any programs in here you rarely use I'd recommend left clicking and then uninstalling them as well that could definitely free up some hard disk space and if they're running in the background of your computer it could definitely be a plus also recommend once you're done doing that open up the star menu type in msconfig underneath programs there should be something that says msconfig here you want to right click on it left click on run as administrator go to the startup tab now basically anything in this area underneath the startup tab you can turn off without really any repercussions the one exception would be if you have antivirus software, I recommend keeping that checked. Please note, if you just turn it off, it's just turning it off from loading every time your computer restarts. So you don't necessarily need all of your printer drivers to turn on right when your computer turns on. They will turn on when you set your printer or you set Microsoft Word or Office to print something out. So you don't necessarily need it to boot every time your computer boots up. And there could be quite a few entries in here depending on how many programs you have. So you would just left click on the entry in here and then click on apply and OK. And you would have to restart your computer, which I would recommend you do. But there's one more thing I want to go through in this tutorial, and that will be to change the paging file size and incorporate some virtual memory into your computer. This last step will be most beneficial to those who are using 4 gigabytes or less of RAM on their computer. So if I open up the star menu here and type in system, and then I go underneath the system entry underneath control panel. You can see I have one gigabyte of RAM installed. So in order to use a little bit more virtual memory off of your hard drive, so basically using some of your hard drive space as another form of memory, which isn't as good as having actual physical memory sticks, but it can definitely help performance if you are really using a slow computer. So in order to use some of that, you would left click on the advanced system settings area on the left here. Underneath performance, where it says visual effects, processor scheduling, memory usage, and virtual memory, left click on the settings button right here. Go up and left click on the advanced tab. And underneath virtual memory, where it says a paging file is an area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it were RAM, left click on this change button. Uncheck the box where it says automatically manage paging file size for all drives. And now select the custom size button right here. For recommended, which in my case is 1534 megabytes, I'm going to insert it into the initial size value here. And now for the maximum size value, I'm going to go back to the system window I have here. And you can see I have one gigabyte of RAM installed. So I opened up a calculator. I would take that into megabytes, so 1024 megabytes is in one gigabyte, and I'm going to multiply that by 1.5, so I'm coming up with 1536. Now the 1.5 multiplier is really subjective, and that's a number that I like and quite a few other people use as well. Some people go higher, some people go lower, but this is just the general rule that I usually follow. So I'm going to type 1536 in for my case. Again, you guys will likely be in a different position, but nonetheless. So make sure it's set to custom size here. Type it in. Click on the set button right here. And then click on OK. You're going to have to restart your computer, so just click on OK. 
apply OK, OK. I'm going to set it to restart later. But I would recommend that after you apply all of these things that I went through in this video, that you do restart your computer. If you have any antivirus scanners like Malwarebytes or Avast or any real-time scanning engines, I'd recommend making sure they're turned on and running any scans that you can with them as well. And that should hopefully be able to speed up your computer a little bit. So, as always, thank you guys for watching this brief tutorial. I do hope I was able to help you out, and I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.